Hi everybody, I'm Al Bernstein. Happy to welcome you to another edition of Superbouts. On this show, we'll take a look at some vintage Muhammad Ali. In this case, it'll be the 1972 version of the champ. We'll look at him against the likes of Jerry Quarry and Richard Dunn. Well, you know, when Ali came back from his exile of boxing due to his draft problems, the first match that he had was against Jerry Quarry. That one down in Atlanta ended in the third round on a TKO when Quarry suffered a series of cuts. That loss haunted Quarry because he felt that if given a little bit more time, he could get to Ali. Well, he was given another chance with Ali on June 27th, 1972, and that's the match we'll look at tonight. Now, this was the Ali who, had just a year earlier, had lost to Joe Frazier, and he was trying to make his way back in the heavyweight division to get another shot at the world crown, and part of the obstacle standing in his way was Jerry Corey. We take a look at the fights that Ali had leading into this Corey matchup, and you can see that he was going all over the world to beat heavyweights, beat Jurgen Blinn in Zurich, uh, defeated Mac Foster in Japan, and he beat the hometown guy, George Chevalo in Canada. So he was notching wins and frequent flyer miles as well. Jerry Quarry was putting wins together. After his loss to Ali, he had lost to George Chevalo, but then had a series of wins designed to get him back into the thick of the heavyweight picture. The win over Larry Middleton, probably the key one that you see there. So Jerry Quarry was still a marketable heavyweight, and it made for a marketable match with Muhammad Ali. So we go back to June 27, 1972, Jerry Quarry's second shot at Muhammad Ali. Well, you have seen Jerry Quarry before. You were in Atlanta, Georgia in 1970 in the corner of Ali. What about uh, this uh, young Quarry? Uh, he's a rough, tough, aggressive guy, sort of a bull in many ways, isn't he? Oh, you can say one thing about Jerry Quarry. His whole career, Jerry never had a bad fight. By bad fight, I mean Jerry Quarry gave it 100% every time he got in the ring. He was steaming mad. He was furious. He was an Irishman that loved to fight. And one thing that can't be questioned is Jerry Quarry's heart. He's got a heart as big as that building that you're looking at there. Well, we're going to find out if the heart of young Jerry Quarry is enough to put up with the great uh, former champion. So we are just about ready. A little thought there by the ex-champion in his corner. Perhaps uh, doing a little praying uh, to Allah. And we're about ready to go here. And the bell is about to sound for round one. From Las Vegas, it is scheduled for 12, and here we go with the action. Jerry started right out with a heavy punch. Now, look at that. Look at Jerry lifting up. I've never seen anything like that. He's lifted Ali up, and Ali seems to be very unconcerned about the whole thing. But Jerry is just absolutely ready to fight. He just doesn't want to know from boxing. He wants to know from fighting here. Well, the referee is Mike Kaplan. He's been in there with a lot of experience, a lot of championship fights. Ali up on his toes, dancing around. He weighs 215, right about, maybe a couple of pounds over his last fight, where he fought at about 212. But uh, I'm sure that you'll see the jab come out. He'll start sticking Quarry, and that he is. Quarry sort of, the, we said, the bull-like. He just sort of crouches a little bit while the right misses the head of the former champion, Muhammad Ali. You can see how Ali's greatness shows here in the way he keeps the distance between them. When he wants to close the distance and punch, he's there. He can afford to do all that fooling around with his hands down because he's so far away from Quarry. Quarry would have to take a flying leap at him to get to him. And if he does that, he'll get nailed by a straight right hand by Ali, who has the fastest hands for any heavyweight I've ever seen. You also mentioned the toughness of Quarry. But uh, I'm sure that the quickness he is going to see for the second time in Ali is... Uh, unlike anything he's faced in any of the heavyweight fights he's had in his uh, career. And there was a little bit of the Ali shuffle. Jerry was having none of it and came in with a very hard body shot that Ali felt landed a little below the belt. And he let him know about it. He pointed to his waistline, to his trunks, and said, listen, this is, uh, keep him up here. This is only a boxing match. Nothing to get mad about. The scoring in Las Vegas will be done by three judges at ringside. The referee, Mike Kaplan, not uh, involved in the scoring and the outcome of this uh, fight, whether it be a decision. Ali just playing around oh, like a good coach. right, then the left uh, to the head of Quarry. He puts his hands up, uh, as if to say, I'm all right, and then comes back swinging and missing. And Ali's saying, come ahead, come on, see if you can find me. We are one minute, less than a minute now, in round one at the Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. And this is prime Muhammad Ali, prime first-round action. He bounced around loose, Colt-like, 
having fun and letting the other guy get frustrated. Quarry is just Quarry. He's coming in hard, relentless. He's trying as hard as he knows how to get to Ali, but it's hard to cut that distance. Less than 25 seconds now remaining in round one. It is scheduled for 12. Remember, a non-title bout. It is for the North American Heavyweight Championship. And I'm sure Ali anxious to be impressive and once again to get another title shot that he lost to Frazier. Just about the end of round one coming up from Las Vegas. Ferdy, let's go back and look at the opening moments of round one. Oh, you see a playful Alley and a rather intense Jerry Quarry trying to cut that distance. Now, as he goes down, Alley pushes him down. He blocks Alley, but finding himself with Alley's weight on his shoulder, he picks him up in a fine Irish rage, and if he could have, he'd have thrown him right out into the $500 seats. Okay, that was a bit of the action, uh, not the uh, boxing action, but more like wrestling action in round one, and the bell is about to sound for round two. Once again, the referee, and there's the bell, is uh, the referee, Mike Kaplan. And the two fighters, heavyweights, meet in the center of the ring. And Ali, once again, taking the offensive with a couple of quick jabs on the right cross that uh, misses the head of Jerry Quarry. That fine flicking jab that Ali used. Oh, a good oh, uppercut there. Great uppercut by Ali. That fine, that fine flicking jab that he uses doesn't stun you so much as bewilders you. That thing is there in your face all the time, and you can't seem to counter it. And all of a sudden, he turns it into a... One of the things we got to keep in mind is in their last fight two years ago, Quarry was stopped on cuts in the third round, and uh, he claimed it was a butt. But we'll have to watch the face of Quarry that is taking a battering from those constant jabs by Ali to see whether or not uh, he starts uh, cutting it all around the eyes or in the forehead, or I think, where he was cut uh, the last time in that other fight. Now Quarry uh, telling the ex-champion to come on and get him as he comes in and raises the chin just barely of Ali with a left cross. That's a big question mark in this fight is whether his facial tissues can take up this flicking jab we're talking about. That cuts. You see what he's doing there? That cuts. Three, four, five, six of them. Ali looking very good. Feet planted. Just measuring his opponent. Backing up against the rings. Covering up nicely as Jerry comes forward. And Ali just pushing him back. And then telling him, come on, Jerry. And Let's get him it right on. The corner. Inviting him right there. Ali just exuding the confidence here. What he's doing there is, is outspeeding Quarry. He's letting Quarry come in and then just letting him have it as he comes on the way in and smothering him so that Quarry's punches are meaning. Look at Ali. Look, look at him. Now that's Haunting him to fight. That's something you don't normally see. A boxer just get back, put his arms, rest his arms on the ropes. There's a, there's a great deal of actor in Muhammad Ali, and he's got the talent to get away with it. Most people who do that would end up with a, just a mouthful of leather when you hang your your uh, arms up on the ropes either that or rope oh three. good shot good shot by Quarry and the actor's response from Ali well he acknowledged it that's a bit of acting you never know when he's hurt and when he's not only Ali knows only Ali needs to know he's a little bored with this and he's playing games with him a little, little cat and mouse with him we are coming up to the end of round two it is scheduled for 12 Less than 30 seconds now. Ali sort of doing a little bit of clowning, just uh, begging his opponent to come to him. Letting him have the body, as he's always done throughout his whole career. Right now, he's letting him have his flanks, his kidneys, and Jerry is more than happy to pound away at something, having not been able to hit anything for the first two rounds. Less than five seconds now remaining in round two. The bell for round three. It's from Las Vegas, Nevada. It is scheduled for 12. The former champion Muhammad Ali in the white trunks and in the Irish green, Jerry Quarry from Bellflower, California. Hands high, feigning, bobbing, waving, coming in, trying to get to the midsection of Ali. Barely does, but pursuing uh, Ali and sort of forcing the action a little bit towards the champion, trying to avert the jab. But the jab of Ali very effective here in the first uh, three rounds. This is the round, you recall, that the last time these fighters met, that it was all over. That uh, Quarry, who now backs up, puts his hands down, and 
says uh, perhaps a little uh, deceptive move on his part or trying to be deceptive which is difficult to be with this uh, clever ex-champion well what happens is he, uh, a fighter tries to fight Ali's game he gets right into Ali's game playing and clowning around that's what you can't do that with Ali because there's only one great one that can get away with it so when Quarry falls into doing Ali things he's losing the fight all to Ali's favor he's, he's once again won a psychological round over somebody Jerry likes these toe-to-toe -to -toe encounters, and, and I would, too, if I was a puncher like Jerry Quarry, where with one punch it can turn around. Ali cannot let him get into toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He doesn't need to. And he's cleverly outboxing him through the first two rounds, and now Jerry has chosen to fall back instead of take the offensive. Well, Quarry, as we pass the 130 mark of this third round, Quarry is uh, pretty much a journeyman fighter, 48 fights, so he's been in with a lot of good ones. And right now, I'm sure he realizes, although this is an ex-champion, he's in one of the, with one of the best uh, that ever put on the gloves. For some presidents, but I think he's the best that ever put on the gloves, not one of them. Well, you'll get a few arguments, but perhaps not too many. A nice little short chopping right to the chin thrown by Ali. It catches uh, the oncoming quarry. Ali missing a right cross, and then back with the jab again. And then again, uh, Quarry seems to perhaps, uh, with the left hook, uh, trying to lunge, taking that step and lunging and trying to uh, connect on the left side, uh, the right side of the uh, of Ali. Uh, now Quarry going downstairs to the body, one, two punches, perhaps once again getting a little bit low. Ali asked him uh, to keep his punches up, if you recall back in round one. Two good hooks by Ali. Ali's got this pinpoint precision in, in punching. Quarry given ground quietly. And he comes up to the bell with Quarry on the ropes and Ali on the attack. The bell has sounded for round four. Ferdy Pacheco, what about this fight? Why is Ali taking on this uh, rough, tough competitor uh, after having uh, lost his title and only actually boxing for the most part his last 15 fights mostly exhibitions except for a KO of Jimmy Ellis and one or two other fights well I, I think he's back to point A he started with Quarry on his second coming of uh, Ali after the uh, exile he took him out in three rounds Quarry always felt he was cheated out of his chance to beat Ali because of a cut and now Quarry really wants him bad of course Ali has to get past him and really look good if he doesn't look good then he, he's going to have a lot, lot of trouble getting a title shot of course Ali is the master boxer and he's now going to take this fight into its um, highlights here because once you've, you've set, established the, the uh, jab as he's established it on Quarry, once he's got Quarry frustrated and not knowing what to do with him, he can afford to pick up the tempo with relative impunity. Jerry just doesn't know what to do with Ali. Ali's picking up. You notice the jabs are picking up. They're harder. They're faster. Look at this. You see the way his, his pace is different from the previous rounds? Now at Ali means business. He's, he's cut out fooling around. He wants to get it on. He wants to get Quarry out of there and really look good. Do you think also, Ferdy, that since uh, Quarry claimed uh, in their last fight a butt and it only went three rounds that Ali was saying, look, all right, if you feel that way, I'll give you the return match and uh, let's get it on and uh, I'll prove to you that it was no butt. It was no fluke that uh, I am the great fighter that I tell everybody I am. No question about it. He puts himself on a limb every time he fights, and he certainly uh, does so with Quarry tonight because Quarry is trying to prove that if he had been given the chance, he could have taken out the alley in Atlanta. That's highly conjectural. We'll see tonight what the answer is. Ali right now looks like he's in command. He's popping him at will with that jab. Quarry is trying as desperately as he can to land that big one, but some nights you wait all night long for the big one that doesn't come, but all those little ones just keep coming like rainwater. Less than a minute to go in round four, and Ali Ferdy seems to be setting the pace, a comfortable pace for him, and measuring his man, and uh, uh, just uh, jabbing, and now making Quarry perhaps miss a little bit more than he had in the first three rounds. Good hook by Ali. Those jabs are starting to hurt. They're not the pity pat jabs of a few rounds ago. They're now the real hard Ali jab. This kind of jab is the kind that sets you up for a knockout. Less than 30 seconds in round four. Look at Quarry's face. That's gritty determination. He just wants to come in there. And he doesn't know how. And Ali is hitting him good right hands as well as the jabs. Ali's setting himself. Oh, great, great uh, hook there, Freddie. Great hook. sort of spun his head around a little bit. Oh, again, one and two, three. Then it's Ali.
Ali. That, that's the Ali. Ali point. coming on as we come to the end of round four. Well, at this point after round four, Jerry Corey probably started to feel a little bit like the Minnesota Vikings or the Denver Broncos. He had his Super Bowl again, but wasn't doing any better this time out. The same problems that had bedeviled him against Ali the first time around were existing here. The hand speed of Ali, the foot speed, the quick combinations were simply too much. And they were making Corey, who was a good heavyweight, look very ordinary. And as we head into round five, Corey was really getting more and more desperate, trying to cut off the ring, do anything he could to get to Ali. Let's check in with round five and see if he does any better. The bell for round five. I would say, Ferdy, that for the first four rounds, it's been a very effective, well-paced Muhammad Ali against this tough Jerry Quarry. Absolutely in control of the fight. Ali has fought just like if it was on a blueprint. He started off slow with a jab, built it up, and now he's building up momentum, so he's really punishing Jerry. Jerry is setting a record for eating jabs in this fight. He seems not to be able to know how to block a jab. He comes right between those gloves, and then he hooks off the jab, which really is confusing Jerry. Jerry, for his part, is trying manfully to get in with those body shots, which will slow Ali down, he thinks. Uh, unfortunately, that has not been the case. Ali has dominated up to this point, and his jabs are now getting to be very effective and weapons of aggression. The former champion seems, if I'm not uh, wrong, Ferdy, to be standing back, just measuring his opponent, and I sense that he's trying to do what he did the last time out, and just get him out of there as soon as he can. Well, sometimes Ali fools you, and he feels like he's going to inflict a little punishment, and he doesn't go all out for the knockout, but stands there and shows you his technical excellence, which is what he's showing you now. This way that this Ali jab is coming out is vintage Ali. That is what made him considered by many to be the greatest fighter of all time. That jab, to be able to put a right hand in there following the jab, he's, he stuns you. He makes you look. Look at what he's doing there. Well, what, I'm, what I'm getting to is, is instead of dancing around, you see him standing flat-footed. He's planted both feet. He's getting ready to either throw the hook or throw the right hand and maybe get it over with if he can. I, I think that's true. If he could get it over with one punch, but Ali's never been a one-punch fighter. He's always outside of Lewis and Maine with a phantom punch. He's never knocked anybody out with one punch. He's always just bedeviled him, dazzled him, confused him, and finally put him away after an avalanche Where's of punches. Where's your down? Where's your down? Just you, you take uh, punches and it, it, you just can't withstand it anymore. Uh, well, that's what Quarry's doing here. He's bouncing around. He's taking an awful lot of punches. Uh, you saw Boudini Brown standing in the corner exhorting Ali. He, he really doesn't need too much cheerleading, but it's nice to have a guy like Boudini Brown in the corner who is get, keeps you getting you up and keeps getting you going. Of course, he's got a great boxing brain in Angelo Dundee who has plans a fight, talks to Ali, and of course Ali does what he wants to in the end, but it's nice to have that kind of talent in your corner. Coming up on 30 seconds in round five, it is scheduled for 12. It's coming from Las Vegas, Nevada. The champion, the ex-champion, still scoring, and Quarry still being somewhat aggressive, trying to get downstairs. Some wild swings, missing it off often. Uh, he's almost resigned himself that he's not going to hit Ali in the head, and he's just going to the body with those things. Uh, the body is easy to hit, but that Ali head is something else. Oh, great combination by Ali. Ali, of course, uh, the taller of the two as we move under 10 seconds. And this will just about be it for round five. The ex-champion on his feet. The bell has sounded for round six, and the fighters are out and ready to go once again, Ferdy. Ali is, oh, Ali's opened up with a barrage. He's, he's almost written a textbook uh, of fighting here. Apparently, he wants the sixth round, so he's opened it pretty good. He's done the shuffle now, and now he is signed in by saying, this is going to be your round, Jerry. You're going to see some real good Ali here. It also appears, Ferdy, for the first time, that with the aggressiveness and the clever boxing of the ex-champion that Quarry for the first time is showing signs of perhaps slowing up a little bit. Yes, he did, especially at the beginning there. He looks like he's taking so many jabs, he's a little dizzy, and he is not reacting just right to these punches now. I think Ali's got him in a position now where he can really outspeed him. But I think if you look at him, watching his legs and his movement, of course he's got a little bit of bounce there, but uh, sometimes a fighter does that to loosen himself up, get some feel, say. Uh, and, and also to, to try to tell your opponent that wasn't anything, that was nothing with the way I'm bouncing around, but still in all, he's not right right now. He is not reacting to these punches like he was in the first two or three rounds. He's certainly not able to get away from them, and Ali is 
really pushing hard leather now. He's, he's not, it's not just uh, joking around in the first two rounds. He's really pushing it. He almost senses that the crowd expects him to come up with something hard, and he's doing it. This is round six. Schedule for 12. Being held in the convention center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Gary Quarry in the green trunks on your left. Catching, and Muhammad Ali, the ex-champion, throwing. Oh, those are hard shots by Quarry. Almost in desperation. Oh, look at that. Look at that combination by Ali. Ali is so fast, they look like a blur. And yet, they were hard punches. Jerry going for the desperation, hook to the head, missing it, and taking a lot of shots in return. We said earlier in this fight how tough this quarry would be, and despite taking us to tremendous punishment here in round 6, Bertie, he is uh, still able to take these blows, and then you'll see him any minute here come up swinging, as he does there, missing the left. Oh, a tremendous swing, and that hit that might have done some damage to the ex-champion. But Ali's got the greatest eyes in boxing. He can just sense and see those punches coming, and he ducks them all. Well, it once again, Ali, telling him to very come low on. Blow. Low blow. Very low blow. Now he's getting hit just for nothing. As that tape is coming off of his gloves, and it should be taken off by the referee. The referee is Mike Kaplan. Obviously, he's blocked out from it. Uh, if he doesn't see it, perhaps... Uh, it can be dangerous. If, if he doesn't see it, they should check the referee's eyesight. It looks like an Irish pennant playing there. Well, there were only 17, 16 seconds remaining in round six. Perhaps the referee, Mike Kaplan, is just going to let the round play itself out. Yeah, Ali is really hot now, and he's, he's really unloading stuff on. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at those things. And he goes back into the rope, and he's coming out in desperation. It's two seconds. It's one. He's going to survive it. Ali very relaxed as he chats with Angelo Dundee and is on his feet, waiting for the start of round seven. Into the replay, you see this blurring of hands. There's a left and a right hand. Now, Jerry's bouncing up and down like it really didn't hurt, but it's just about killing him. As you can see, that Ali comes into the attack. Now, this is a pressure, all pressure attack to put it, to finish it. Two lefts, a right hand landing flush. Jerry in the back of the roof. Can he keep this up and can Quarry take this devastating punishment? Round seven, we'll see. A tremendous round six was for the ex-champion. As you said, the question is, can Quarry, can he hang in there? A tremendous hook by Ali, and that looks like it's it. Mike Kaplan, the referee, pushes Quarry to a neutral corner, and Muhammad Ali has ended it in the seventh round. Quarry once again unable to solve the dilemma that is Ali and the enigma that he presents to Quarry, who cannot understand what's happened to him but look at the shots it almost Ali looks uh, pretty like the right uppercut was a more telling blow than the final punch which was a devastating left hook at, at this point all punches would have been devastating to quarry because it was really out he tried as hard as he could it was pointless to continue the referee was extremely right in stopping the fight and Ali knew no further punishment was necessary Ali waved the referee on he's encouraging Jerry quarry which is just the way Ali is a great sportsman in and out of the ring. So there you have it. Muhammad Ali, a winner. A seventh round technical knockout winner. Muhammad Ali perhaps setting his sights once again on another shot at the heavyweight title. So Jerry, back to Super Bouts. Well, by May of 1976, when Ali was ready to take on the Commonwealth champion, Richard Dunn, he was 34 years of age and some thought perhaps a shop-worn champion. Well, Ali had won his title back and defended it six times leading into this fight with Dunn. But as we take a look at some of those defenses, you can see why people thought maybe Ali was starting to lose his edge. The fight with Jimmy Young, of course, one that many people believe Ali lost. Tough match with Joe Frazier to be sure in there. And so Ali might have been on the downside. But was Richard Dunn the man who could beat him? Not too much really here.